There are a lot of ways to read user input in Bash scripts. However, allowing a user to type input can pose some problems. The main issue is input validation, where you have to account for every possible input. An easy way around this is to create a multiple choice menu for your Bash scripts. Using this method allows you to define a simple, predetermined set of options the user can choose from. In this quick tip, we will discuss using a select construct in case statements to create a simple multiple choice menu in Bash scripts. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. First, let's take a look at an example multiple choice menu script, then, we will break it down and explain each section. Here is the script in action. Pay careful attention to the choices and the output of each one. Take note of how after selecting some options it asks for another selection. But, when we choose tacos, it exits back to the prompt. Now let's dissect each part of the script. This will help you understand how the multiple choice menu is created, and how you can edit it to fit your needs. The first line is the shebang, it tells the process running the script which interpreter to use. In this case it is bash. The next line sets the ps3 variable. This is the prompt used by the select statement when asking for a selection from our multiple choice menu. This line creates an array of the options available for the user to select. The array's name is food, and it has four values, pizza, pho, tacos and quit. Here we start the select construct which creates the menu. In this line we are telling select to create a menu from all the values in the foods array. We are also going to set the user selection in the fav variable. The select construct has a similar syntax to a for loop. Case statements allow you to selectively execute a command that corresponds with the first matched pattern. For example, if we select pizza from the multiple choice menu, it will execute the command list that corresponds to that selection. For a complete tutorial on case statements read, using case statements in bash scripting, at putorius.net. In the case statement we have the opening stanza. This tells case to search for an option that matches the value of the fav variable. Next we have a bunch of clauses outlining each option. It starts with the option, or options, to match, then the code that should be run if a match is found. All of our clauses end with two semicolons, which is the termination string. These are explained in depth in our case statement article. This clause says if the value of fav matches pizza run the echo command. Before the animation at the beginning of this video, I asked that you pay attention to the choices being made, and the output of each. I wanted to point out that every time a choice is selected, the code will run then drop you back into the select loop. The tacos clause shows you how to add the break command. This tells the script to break out of the loop. So if you select pizza, it will run the echo command that corresponds with that selection, then ask for another selection. However, if you select tacos, it will run the echo command that corresponds with the tacos clause and then break the loop and continue with the script. Remember in the introduction we mentioned accounting for all possible inputs? Well this next line helps a little with that premise. This is a catch all. It uses the asterisks wildcard to catch any input that doesn't match one of our predetermined choices. Our valid choices are 1 through 4, if the user inputs 8, or anything other than 1 to 4, this line will match and tell them it is invalid input. Here is an example of how the catch all works. After all the match clauses, we end the case statement with ESAC which is case backwards. This is similar to an if statement that closes with phi. The last line closes the select construct with the word done since it was opened with do. In this Linux quick tip we showed you how to create a multiple choice menu in a bash script. It uses several different looping and conditional constructs which can make it kind of intimidating at first. However, once you understand the logic, it is fairly simple. You can find the written version of this tutorial at putorius.net. If you enjoyed this video please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos.